And I think there's so something to be said about you know, blood, sweat, and tears for a client, for your business, for the people you work with. I mean, when I was growing up, my dad never said you have to have straight A's. He just said, I want you to try your best, That's which nice. is almost worse <laughs> because it's, bad. it's it's asking you like, well, what is your best? Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. Excited about our guest, Kelly Levesque, in the house. Good Thank to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Lewis. Of course. I'm, I'm ex- so excited to be here. I'm excited you're here. I got introduced to you through my girlfriend, uh, Jen, who you guys met, I think, through a training facility, through a mutual friend, and she keeps talking about you. And she doesn't tell me people ever to have on. She never recommends anyone, but she kept talking about you, and I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. And then she was just like, it was insistent. So at some point, Very I got to listen sweet. to her, right? <laughs> and, There's a big uh, high heels to, to fill then today, <clears throat> don't exactly, I? Exactly, <laughs> yes. So, um, so I'm excited you're here, and you are, you would call yourself a nutritionist or yes. wellness coach and, slash? No, well, I have a health coaching degree, and mm-hmm. then I went back to UCLA and Berkeley to get my postgraduate nutrition training done. Yeah. And so, yes. Okay, um, cool. Nutrition. And you work with celebrity clients like Jessica Alba and uh, Chelsea Handler, I think I saw, and a few other celebrities. And you were just talking about before we started rolling that your life is kind of surreal right now, right? Yes. You feel like, you know, six years ago you were not here. Yeah. And now you're working with like these huge clients, these big celebrities that all like trust everything you say and follow your every word. Yes. So wh- how did you get here? You know, wh- how, where were you six years ago and how did you get here now? Right. Um, well, out of undergrad, I went into cancer and genetics. So I had an eight year corporate career in cancer and genetics. And the whole time I was always talking about health and nutrition and jumping into research because my job was in cancer. And so I had to read research every single day and I knew how to decipher a study. I knew what Mm. a significant P value was. So I would just, you know, Google in PubMed, not on Google, but in PubMed, the nutritional research and would geek around inside of that and tell my friends what to do at parties that, you know, have them meet me for like high intensity training with like fasted Mm -hmm. little things that I was learning. And I think my friends got really annoyed with me talking about it. Mm. They're like, why don't you just do it? You can have a career in this. Um, And it was a saturated space. It also wasn't very popular when I was in college because I'm 34 to be an RD. A lot of RDs ended up, um, that's a registered dietitian for anyone who doesn't know. Um, They ended up working in hospitals, dialysis centers, and that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about how to feel great. Mm. I wanted to talk about how to be vibrant and fuel your body the right way. I wanted to make it accessible and easy. And I felt like a lot of people had a lot of drama or like surrounding food. So one of my girlfriends was like, what are you doing? You you're from a family of entrepreneurs, go out and do it. Stop like sitting on this, you know, W not, you know, getting your regular uh, paycheck and health insurance. And that's scary. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start a side hustle. So I went back to school at night and used my like corporate paycheck to pay for my website, my professional images, stayed up late when, other people wouldn't. And I just kept saying yes. So it, you know, fast forward. And in September 2015, I was able to transition because I was getting so many inquiries to work with me that I felt safe. It was felt safe enough. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also, there's something so beautiful about having a side hustle because it isn't your main form of income. So you're not like a cheesy sales rep and you're not pushing people. And I was never signing people up for meeting with me for a package of 10 sessions or anything like that. I was like, I'm going to earn it every single time. Mm, just Let's, do one. Yeah. And then it keeps like one. Right? Yeah. yeah. And in the beginning, I mean, my first half a dozen clients I saw for free, I wanted their transformations. Yeah. I would call them, give them meal plans, yeah. work with functional medicine doctors to get blood tests. Mm-hmm. I loved the science. So it wasn't just a prescri- it's the general prescription for everyone. It was yeah. like, what are your symptoms and how do we fix that? I think it's an important topic is so many, there's a lot of people in health and wellness who are listening, uh, health coaches, personal trainers that I know listen, and most people aren't willing to work for free right away. Sure. And you've got to work for free, I think, unless you can sell something, work for free and get great testimonials, case right. studies. Whether you're a health coach, business, 
marketing, it doesn't matter, work for free, get a few clients and show incredible results for them. Yes. you. Yeah. I mean, you have to bring value. Yeah. And if you think about those five people that I worked with for free and you and they told five friends or mm-hmm. walked into a party and looked leaner, looked stronger, yeah. looked more vibrant, had clearer skin, happier. were happier, were talking about how great they felt, how, how their sleep had improved, how they were being more productive at work, um, how they were even just like maybe a better spouse or mom or dad. That paid itself off tenfold. Yeah. I mean it's amazing to me. And and those are some of my favorite people because I had to work hard for that. And I think there's so something to be said about, you know, blood, sweat and tears for a client, for your business, for the people you work with. Cause it makes, I mean, when I was growing up, my dad never said you have to have straight A's. He just said, I want you to try your best, Mm, which is almost worse (laughs) because it's, it's it's asking you like, well, what is your best? Uh You know, yeah, you could slide and slack and seize for degrees or whatever, but it was worse. It's almost like when they say, um, you know, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Mm, you know? That feels bad. <laughs> That's worse. So he wasn't saying like, here's excellence and we want you to strive for that. Yeah. Just give your best. Yeah. It's all he, good either way. He was testing what I thought was excellent, oh. which I thought was pretty powerful. So, did so you get straight A's. Uh, I did. (laughs) I did. I'm a daddy's girl. And, you know, but he didn't um, say get straight A's. No, he never did. You know, and for my sisters and I, each of us were different. Um, And I'm the oldest of three. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I set the example. But um, but he was an entrepreneur and I became an entrepreneur. And the side hustle was so fun. And so my passion and something that I would spend hours researching, um, you know, became like a, a I guess kind of like a Dave Asbury where I wanted mm. to get every test done on my own body, wow, understand really? how they worked. Um, yeah. And I just have always loved it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't want to create drama for other people. I wanted it to be really accessible, really easy, really doable, really realistic. Mm. And I think that's what has become so successful for me when I work with these clients that have high stress jobs, they have to be in red on the red carpet. Maybe they're on TV or in the movies and they have to portray excellence um, and beauty and brains, they need the fuel to do that. Mm. And it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but they need to be consistent. And I think consistency sometimes is better than perfection. Perfection or just being up and down exhausted. And yeah. So, I mean, here's the, here's the challenge I have with, uh, we have a lot of different health people that come on and there's so many different extreme diets or just extreme, like this is the way to do it. If you want to be lean, shredded, strong, whatever it is, sure. skinny. And for me, I just feel like what, there's gotta be something that's easy for everyone yeah. to follow, but everyone's like swears by their way. Like you said, you've tested a lot of these things. It sounds like you tested fasting. You've tested probably paleo and keto and all these other things. Sure. I'm assuming, right? Tested it all. So what's what works? What's the most effective thing to, to to have a healthy, whole, holistic life and body? Sure. Well, I think first of all, I think they all work, and uh-huh. I think a lot of them are really the same. Like if we take yeah. if we take paleo, we take Mediterranean, and we take keto. Atkins, and we take keto. Same thing. Like if you really look at the Except biology for like the of it, beans or the cheese or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can look at the biology of it and simplify it to the inputs, which is what I do in my book. Um, is I talk about protein, fat fiber and greens, like green vegetables, things that are deep in color and phytochemicals and nutrients to fight basically oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. But it really comes down to like ditching the drama and saying, okay, Lewis, would you rather have bison over wild salmon? Cool. You can have that. It's going to break down to amino acids in your body that are going to be used for muscle growth. That's going to be used to synthesize collagen. That's going to turn off four hunger hormones in your body. Mm. And cool. Let's not go tit for tat over what's better and why they both have omega threes. And if you're sourcing good quality food, we don't need to like have a fight about it. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that's where people get caught up is they look at health in a silo and they read one article that says they need to add turmeric or acai or mm-hmm. matcha to something. And then all of a sudden they're having all these weird tonics <laughs> yeah, all day yeah. long yeah, exactly. <laughs> to get it in. Yeah. Um, Especially here in LA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So for me, it's really, I work to, with people to turn off hunger hormones and, and we do that with, what does that mean? Not being, craving food all the time yeah because the new research is Gosh, showing I'm so hungry all the time yeah and the new Starving. okay well we can fix that <laughs> not all the time but yeah yeah well so how do you fix it if you're if you're hungry all the time 
Is so it called a hungry hormone? Is that yeah, you have actually you have about eight hunger hormones in your body and they're regulated by different things. So, for example, when you drink fat, like in your bulletproof coffee, yeah. you're releasing cholest- it triggers the release of cholecystokinase, which calms hunger. If you really? eat, when yeah. you have fat, it yeah. releases that. Yeah. yeah. And then if you have like fiber or something that stretches your stomach, like the physical stretching of your stomach, um, it calms the production of ghrelin, which is another really strong hunger hormone. So, oh. so you have fiber and fat yeah. combined. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you can yeah. not eat for a week and you're fine. Right. Yeah, and then there's protein and protein turns off a number of hunger huh. hormones. And for example, neuropeptide Y, we crave carbohydrates when we don't have enough protein. So then we add protein and we're not craving donuts and pizza. And I love pizza and donuts. Though. I mean, they're great. Gosh. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> the challenge is, here's my challenge. I just will have like a whole pizza and then I want to have more. Because I'm, it's never satisfying enough. Sure, and I, I mean, can eat like unlimited donuts. Well, until I get sick, and then I'm like, <laughs> "Why did I just do this?" Because I can't just have a few because I'm not full. No, but it's it's I'm also like, you can't. There's no off button with those type of fast carbohydrates. So you just tough. have the release of dopamine, which. Okay, you're going to have that release of dopamine if you do illegal drugs like cocaine or yes. have an orgasm yep. or eat a sidecar donut. Or have a hug. Yeah, or dopamine from a hug or a laugh <laughs> or looking at pictures. So you think about the other ways that you can release yeah. dopamine. But yeah, I mean, if you're having donuts or pizza, Gosh, there's really no so off good. button. But yeah. if you sit down to like a Texas barbecue, you'll probably stop at some point or mm. your body will start sweating. Right. So, you know, to each their own. But... Yeah, I just keep it simple. I say protein, fat, fiber, and greens. Um, those four things, if you put them on your plate together. Greens do, or grains? Greens. Greens. Like green, leafy greens. Right. Um, there's a sulfur-based sugar in leafy greens that feeds probi- probiotic bacteria in the gut. And there's been some like 50-50 research on whether probiotics on the market are actually inoculating into gut bacteria. We think that there's a belief that like your the acid in your stomach is completely obliterating that mm. bacteria and it's not staying alive. But we do know that resistant starch and um, the sulfur-based sugar in leafy grains feeds it. So you are just a walking ecosystem of gross bacteria. Wow. Let's keep it thriving and flourishing. <laughs> <laughs> now, cooked or uncooked, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you consume it. Yeah. Sauteed, cooked, fried. I mean, maybe not fried. <laughs> but but uh, hot or cold or anywhere in between doesn't matter. How yeah. you eat your food. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're getting. Like, because people will say, oh, well, I'm going to eat the vegetables raw because there are enzymes and enzymes help to break down and unlock the natural nutrition in that food. Or I'm going to sprout it or soak it because that gets rid of anti-nutrients like mm. phytates and helps me absorb those nutrients better. Or I'm going to cook it because I don't have the stomach acid or enzymes production because I'm always stressed out and it's hard for me to digest that kind of a thing and eating raw vegetables makes me really bloated. So really, I mean, I, this is what I do with my clients all day long. I can make a case for why you should do all of those options. So let's just get down to like what you like to eat Mm -hmm. and go back to the basics because we don't, yeah, like why you should be refocusing your energy on building your business, seeing your family, you know, like being with your friends and Obviously, like putting high quality food on your plate is super, super important and not having to worry and think about when is my next meal or crashing into lunch and trying to make a good decision. But you have low blood sugar, so you're going for the wrap or the right. pizza or something as opposed Candy to making whatever, yeah. healthy choices. Right. Get out of your own way. Turn off the hunger hormones, balance your blood sugar and live your life. Should people be testing things, blood tests or anything else, or do they not need to do that to be able to do this. I mean, if you want to optimize, I'm a big fan of being a lab rat. So I love a Cyrex food allergy test. You can do 180 foods and it's actually a blood um, and an antibody test. So it's looking for antibodies, your immune system, what it's fighting in mm, your blood really? versus a prick test. Yes. And ALCAT and MRE, MRT testing is the thing with labs is they just have to be reproducible. They don't have to be efficacious. So the doctor decides whether the lab is useful for them. The lab doesn't have to prove that what they're giving you is correct. So Mm. like an MRT or an ALCAT test is actually putting like a dried food product on a slide, dropping like a drop of your blood on it, looking through a microscope and saying, what's happening to the blood cells? I mean, that is absolutely reproducible, but is that telling me if I'm allergic to coffee or Mm. gluten or peanuts? Absolutely not. So, uh, but that's accessible to a lot of acupuncturists and Eastern medicine docs and, um, and, People want testing done, so they do it. But do I think it's the best? Probably What's not. What's the best? 
I like Cyrex. Cyrex. Yeah, Cyrex. What is it? It's um, they're looking for antibodies in your blood, so they're not putting it on the slide and looking at what happens to the to the cell. They're actually looking for markers on immune cells mm. for specific food groups, and they can break it down. I mean, they can break down gluten to or like wheat to gluten and gliadin. They can really? break down dairy to casein, whey, lactose. I mean, is it just we a get prick specific. Or what is it? You give a vial of blood and it oh, goes wow. to a lab. Okay. Yeah. So you have to yeah. go somewhere and, and get the your doctor. Your doctor yeah. can call for the test. Um, I mean, I have phlebotomists that can go to my client's home and oh, take right, blood right. at their right. house. And sure. we could be here. Let's, let's bring them in. <laughs> I just did a blood test a few weeks ago um, for insurance policy. So yeah, yeah. life insurance. <laughs> yeah, life insurance policy. <laughs> uh, and then I did one a few months ago for because I'm with the USA national handball team. So like every once oh. in a while, we were randomly tested. Like pee and blood, so sure. it's just like randomly at eight a.m. I got to knock on the door. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I used to hate getting blo- giving blood. I still don't like it, but it's a lot easier now. Yeah. If you do it a few times. It's like not as bad. I hear ya. I don't like it though, but I, I never tested for this, and I've always wanted to, but I've never been able to figure out what's the best test. It's very um. Because there's these ones where you like spit in a tube and you send it off. You prick. You'd always think I'm like, what? Yeah. Are any of these gonna do anything for me? Yeah, I really do think Cyrex is good, but you also need to remember that um, you know antibodies are your body's response to an allergen or a toxin or whatever and they can linger around so sometimes people are have a maybe they have a gluten and like antibodies happening to gluten and they stop eating gluten but those antibodies can stay for about six months in your bloodstream so even if you're not eating gluten, really so six some, months it's a long time could stop yeah and still be effective for six months exactly and what's Dang. interesting is there's some really sick research coming out of usc about fasting so um if you do four days of fasting you can no actu- food or you mean intermittent fasting? no 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 food four days um but it's more of like a this is a clinical fasting for like longevity, length of telomeres, shrinking your liver, you kill off about 60% of your immune cells. So those those guys that are fighting gluten or dairy or whatever, you whatever. Kill them. They, it's they called die. apoptosis. It's programmed cell death. Your body starts going through programmed cell death and it kills off all of these antibodies. And then when you refeed at four days, you your body completely rebuilds your immune system fresh and clean. Really? Yeah. So have you tried this? I did. I did it with Four Chelsea. Days. I did it with Chelsea Handler in January. No way. Four days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No food. Well, we got into ketosis first because if you what think about uh, ketosis, is when your body is feeding off of fat. Yep. Um. So when you eat fat, your liver breaks down fat and produces ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are the battery operation of your body. So if you're eating carbohydrates, that's like the gas pedal. So you have carbs, you have energy, like a 16 year old on the gas pedal, up, and then you crash down, right? Mm-hmm. But when your body is feeding off of fat, you have this all these stores of fat in your body, and then if you're eating fat, your liver is constantly producing producing ketones and then your brain it it never has um, a lack of energy or fuel it's a constant yeah it's a constant flow of fuel and I mean all the stuff coming out in keto it it kind of correlates to fasting because a lot of times when we fast you get into keto ketosis that is but I like to put people into ketosis if they're going to go do something like that because you will feel flu-like symptoms if you just you stop feel it. yeah if you just stop eating you're going to feel like junk. so going to ketosis first yeah by eating fat by eating fat and not eating carbohydrates so Got ketosis it. is if you're a Prius and you're gas or battery operated gas is carbohydrates uh, and fat is battery. ketones battery yeah, yeah. yeah so we have to not have gas and then our body will feed off of of ketones and fat got it so we remove carbohydrates get into ketosis test for that via blood or pee and then say okay now we're going to go into four days so you do the test when you go into ketosis yeah i make sure that they're in ketosis then you do the test which test this the, the main test you talked about oh the food allergy test you can do that at any anytime. time gotcha. yeah, okay yeah, yeah. so you don't have to starve to take a test got no, it. no 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 take the this, test anytime yeah what's it called again cyrex cyrex yeah and then this other thing is just what to kind of reboot your body. It's, it's just, just some cool research coming out of USC. Like I would probably never do it more than once a year. It's mm. I like food too much. I love food. Yeah. Four days no food is hard. Well, you think it would be, but it was weird because we woke up on day two and we're like, I'm not hungry. What's happening? Huh. <laughs> yeah, and we just realized we had a lot more time in the day reading, getting emails done. Like, um, and it was the very beginning of the year, so everything was kind of shut down. It was right after New Year's and. Um, yeah, and it's not that's not the norm for me, obviously. Like all I talk about is eating three meals a day, mm-hmm. eating to turn off hunger hormones, not worrying about food, ditching the drama, 
and eating what your cells actually need to break down and rebuild. So people don't realize this, but like how much do you weigh? Is that okay? 235. Okay. So in your lifetime, how much do you weigh? I weigh like 130. <laughs> I don't care. Um, in your lifetime, you will have weighed nine times that much because you you think that like the cell on your cheek is the same cell, but your body completely breaks down and rebuilds your wow. rebuilds itself about nine times in your lifetime. So it really matters what you eat because like a th- those new cells are being made from old cells and what you're eating. I know. Mic drop. No, I mean, that's why people probably look younger, older when they take care of their health throughout their whole life because they're eating good foods and so they stay younger looking, healthy exactly. looking. Exactly. I obviously really love this stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So this four-day fasting thing, you did it with Chelsea Handler. Mm-hmm. After day two, you're like, oh, I'm not hungry. I'm fine. Yeah. Your body adjusted to it. Well, how did it feel after day four? Well, I was... Like you have an emotional connection to food. So I was like, what am I going to have next? Right. Planning like the meal. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, we, we were Six in Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I pulled in. There's an Air One in Calabasas on my way back, Ooh. which is like fancier than Whole Foods. Really? Well, the Air One over here? Yeah. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's the same store. Yeah, yeah. So I just, you know. Got everything. Yeah. I was like, well, I didn't eat for four days. So technically how much money would that have been? We'll just spend right. it all. On one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it was, uh, it was good. It was really, I felt great. It was just kind of one of those things. I wasn't, you know, you have to be prepared for something like that. And I wasn't emotional about it. I was just like supporting. I had to support Chelsea in this process because it's mm. something I told her about maybe in October. She's like, I really want to do that thing in January. Okay, we'll give it a try. I'd never done it wow. either. So now what does it do? So it helps with the immune system, mm-hmm. rebuild it. It helps. I'm assuming you lost some weight or. Yeah, I mean, and it was, I tested body fat percentages, inches. I had a glucometer. I was testing her blood sugar. Wow. I had a ketometer. I was testing her ketones. Just making sure she felt good. Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't, I'm not into torturing people. No, of course not. So um, it was an interesting thing. And there's a lot of really cool research out of USC on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a one-off. How did she feel afterwards? Or how did you feel? I mean, it was like. She was really proud of herself. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things where she would never go do something like that. I would never go do something like that. And the research was there. And it's really nice sometimes, especially when I have clients who, uh, and Chelsea wasn't a yo-yo dieter, dieter by any means, but I have had clients that have yo-yo dieted and they lose weight and feel great. And then they eat their way back up or drink their way back up right. into a range that they don't want to be in. And I think after a a certain number of years, the commitment to it and the excitement and um, really just sticking to something, it doesn't last as long. What maybe you would do for a month and a half or two months, then becomes six weeks, then becomes four weeks, then all of a sudden you can't complete something for a week. And so it's a short enough period of time where if you have the support or whatever, you can commit to it mm. and make it happen. And she left with a lot of confidence. And I'm right. I'm all about completing people. Completing something. Yeah, I'm all about people completing things and feeling confident. And that's why in my book, I talk about like breaking the day up into thirds because people always try to do a wholesale change of their life. I'm going to change everything. I'm not going to eat gluten. I'm not going to eat lectins. I'm not going to eat beans. I'm not going to eat dairy. So hard. And you're like, okay, until you go to sushi. Right. Right, right, right. Or until you're on vacation in Paris. Or, like, oh, I'll just do a little bit here. Right. There. And then that just lends itself to. I cheated kill- a little. Let me just cheat everything. Yeah. <laughs> you either blow it out and binge yeah. or you lose confidence in yourself. And I think they're both detrimental, it, especially when we're in a world that social media is involved and, you know, people want to look and feel great. And there's a lot of information on the Internet. And if you can't complete something, that's just you not believing in yourself again and again and again, and it kills your confidence. And I think when it comes to being successful in this world, you have to be building up your confidence and believing in yourself the most. And it even comes down to your decisions around food. So absolutely. Yeah. Decisions around everything. Yeah. Now, why do you think our self-worth is so tied to our body image? Well, I think that we have to address the fact that there is an innate sexuality that people um, who like Giselle or supermodels or Brady, Mm -hmm. um, you look at these like fit football players and sexy models and their body is appreciated. It is beautiful. And we can't knock them down for having that body, but we also have to embrace 
um, what is our natural figure as well. And I think what we, what it is, is pretty animalistic Mm. because men and women are attracted to like you're attracted from the outside first and then the attraction stays from the inside, right? The outside is what gets you attracted and the inside is what keeps you attracted. And it's unfortunate sometimes because people get really caught up in the way that they look. And what I try to coach my clients in is not having these goals that are so outside of reality, but to really celebrate the wins, whether that is gaining two pounds of muscle and being stronger and feeling more energized or clearing a little bit of skin or even just sticking to a plan for a little while that can build confidence around how we feel. Or maybe you're, you know, you've worked out and eaten clean for a couple of weeks and you treat yourself to a new romper or a dress or a pair of heels. I mean, it, it, it really can be, or you treat yourself to a massage or a facial or whatever it is that like you're into. I think it's really important to celebrate your body because so many of my clients will look at these people like a Victoria's Secret model or the Insta model in the bikinis and the girls who follow them and they want to be just like them. They Mm -hmm. want that body. But the problem is if they don't have that body, then they don't feel confident. If they don't feel confident, they don't feel sexy. And then they don't give off that confidence and sex appeal. And it's detrimental to themselves because a lot of guys think they're attractive. And the same goes for guys. If they don't put off that they feel confident and sexy, then the girl is going to vibe off of whatever that aura is or that Mm. energy is that they're putting off. And that has a lot to do with not being perfect, but putting in the effort and like loving what you got and, and getting, you know, taking what you have to the next level. Um, whether that's taking yourself to the next emotional level by meditating, taking yourself to the, to the next, like, um, you know, mental level by education and learning and like going to the school of greatness or whatever it is that you're doing to better yourself. I think all of those things you do to better yourself can make you more confident in who you are and more comfortable in your skin. And whether you're a size two or a size 12, you got to rock what you got. Mm. Yeah. Easier said than done though. It is. Sometimes. It is, but there's a lot of society pressure for that. And it's, it's not going away. Yeah. Get off Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing too. That, I Don't mean, just look at people that you wish you were like. Exactly. You know, and, and, and judge yourself based on, you know, compare <sighs> yourself constantly, you know. Exactly. There's so much yeah. of that. You, you compare yourself to your community. Um, uh, there's a friend of mine, uh, Danica. I have a couple of plus size models. I know Danica. Yeah. yeah she's okay. in New York. The, yeah. Uh, model Eats or Model yeah, Foods. Yeah. Model or, Meals. Yeah, model Meals. Yeah. 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 And she's like, she is so beautiful she's inside and out and like Sweet rocks art. her curves and like, I think that's the perfect example of exactly how you should be. And I mean, she's totally in love and Mm -hmm. landed a super hot boyfriend. And it really has to me more to do with who she is as a person and her self love Mm -hmm. really more than anything. Yeah. She's got a great energy about herself. Yeah. Shines, you know, absolutely. Now some of this genetics, because I've got some, I got a friend, Steve Weatherford, who's like literally the most ripped human I've ever met. (laughs) And he's just so big and so ripped. Sure. And I'm just like, he just says like, I think it's genetics. He trains harder than anyone I know. Yeah. But I'm also like, some of that is just. Genetics, hormones, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of testosterone or human growth hormone. There's a lot of things at play there. How much sleep is he getting? What's his stress levels? Um, Yeah. How do we increase, uh. I guess, testosterone and growth hormone naturally. Intermittent fasting. Really? Yeah. Intermittent fasting or fasted workouts. Is that the only scientific workouts. research proven? Those are the two really strong ones. Really? Yeah. Intermittent fasting does. Yes. I've heard so many different things that it doesn't do anything for people and other people that swear that it does. Well, you have to remember there's bio-individuality for everyone, but um, but yeah, an intermittent fast can can release human growth hormone and testosterone to hold on to lean muscle mass in a fasted state. So that's why people get lean gains and that type of a, um, when they do intermittent fasting, um, when it comes to fasted workouts, I think those are the best. What do you mean? Fasted workouts? Like wake up and do a hit training or before lift. you eat anything. Don't eat anything. 
Yeah. Because those are good. They're hard. Yeah. Because you get that same, re- you get those same results. And I think the interesting thing, I work with a lot of women and I, when, when it comes to intermittent fasting, it can lend itself to eating disorder type behaviors where then, well, I haven't been eating for 12 hours. Now I won't eat for two days. And I'm going to just put a little asterisk on my four day situation that will never happen again this year. Like I'm not going to go back and do that. That's that was a scientific thing (laughs) to figure out how it worked for my body. Do I think it's successful once a year? Absolutely. But I don't practice intermittent fasting Mm. unless, you know, I feel I listen to my body. If I'm not hungry, I won't eat. But a lot of times for me, if I get up and eat, then I eat better throughout the day. Really? Yeah. Like, so when you eat within the first couple hours? So I have a smoothie. It's called the Fab Four Smoothie. So it incorporates the four things that turn off hunger hormones. So protein, fat, fiber, and greens. So I'll use um, Smart. either a pea protein or I'll use like a, there's actually a grass-fed beef protein right now oh. or a collagen protein. So it's not whey. It's actually- you seen the bone broth protein? The, I, Dr. Axe. Yeah. I have one of those. I got a bunch of his products the other week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's something like that. I'm not picky as long as it's minimal ingredients. Then I'll do um, fat. So coconut oil, MCT oil, avocado, uh-huh. whatever. Um, one to two tablespoons, depending on how hungry I am. And then fiber, chia, flax, acacia, um, throw in a tablespoon or two of that. And then a big handful of greens. And I pretty much limit- fruit like if i want to put fruit in it i'll put a fourth a cup really but you go to these smoothie places in la so much fruit, right? you might as well be having rosé <laughs> right. honestly right. it's two cups of fruit a date a banana and they're like here's a sprinkle of chia seeds and some almond milk yeah, yeah. like that's gonna put me on a blood sugar roller coaster i'm gonna be crashing 90 minutes later three hours i'm gonna be shaky hangry irritable and no one's gonna want to be around me right. so, so there should be no fruit so it just limit it like y- every meal that you eat should lean more protein, fat, and fiber to turn off hunger than maybe like pizza, cookies, cake, wine, because that just increases hunger, increases blood sugar, kind of puts you on that blood sugar roller coaster, if you will, where you're eating, you're crashing, you need to eat again. I mean, if you're eating predominantly carbohydrates, you will need to eat like every three hours wow. versus- Or feel tired. And yeah. Like- an inability to concentrate, brain fog- full of insulin, insulin resistance, leading down the road to metabolic syndrome and all of that. So, but obviously everyone's different and you have to be able to incorporate those things in your life. You can't say you're never going to have them right? because that's not realistic. Yeah, exactly. You said you break your day up in three parts. Yeah. So the first part is the smoothie. Workout smoothie. Workout first, then smoothie. Yeah. Hit workout or lifting or sprints. Honestly, it's totally dependent on what I feel like. The mood. Yeah. yeah. So I'll hit a spin class. I'll go to Velocity, the gym, mm-hmm. um, and do some like type of weight lifting. I'm not afraid of weights. A lot of girls think they're going to get bulky. And no, I'm like, not. no, you're going to get lean and all of your fat is going to go away. That's it. <laughs> um, so I'm super into lifting. Um, I love yoga. I randomly got a certification back in the day when I thought I needed to have be everything for everyone. Like I can train you. I can make a meal plan. Right, I can right, talk right. about, and then I was just like, no, I'm a geek on science. Let's, <laughs> let's stick to what you're good at. Um, but yeah, really, I think consistency more than anything is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Because about 48 hours, we, our muscles start to um, break down. So you want to be moving or, or, or putting, um, some tension on those muscles about every 48 hours yeah, at, at the least. So, okay. That's part one, part two. Part two is, um, so you get through and then it's talking about lunch to dinner, which the three o'clock, four o'clock hour can be the witching hour for a lot of my clients where they want a coffee, they want a brownie. Snack, yeah, bar. Exactly. And so making the right decisions at lunch mm. that aren't going to make and learning what you need. Because some people can put, you know, protein, fat, fiber, and greens. Maybe they're doing like a lettuce wrap burger and a side of broccoli. Maybe they're doing an arugula salad with shrimp and avocado. Maybe... It, it depends on the person, but you got to think like and try out the types of meals and make sure that you're not super tired after you eat. Yeah. That means either you're eating too much or you're not eating the right things for you. You want to feel energized without feeling tired because when we start to feel tired, that's when we reach for the things that we don't really mm-hmm. want to eat at three or four o'clock. Like more candy or something or yeah. sweets. Yeah. yeah, sure. We need a little bit of energy. For sure. Exactly. Red so. Bull. Or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you like Red Bull, you should switch to Runa. That's guayusa, guayusa leaf. And if you haven't heard of it, it's um, uh, it's a superfood leaf. It's like a tea mm. leaf, but 
it has they have a little can like a, a red bull that's how i get the red bull people off red bull oh really runa mm-hmm. yeah it's like getting smokers to vape but it's still not that good for you is it no, it actually is. It's full of antioxidants okay. and it's um, it's almost like a green tea. But <laughs> it Vaping had... is not good for you no. still. I'm like, my brother, at least he stopped smoking a few years ago, but yeah. he's like vaping. He's like, no, it's just this. I'm like, no, dude, it's yeah. still not good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Maybe not as bad, but yeah. it's good. something else that's bad too, you know? Yeah. Sometimes uh, I like to replace and then remove depending on the yeah. client. So like if they're a real ice cream person, I'll be like, okay, let's switch to this ice cream, lower in sugar, higher in fat. Yeah. Exactly. I love coconut ice cream. Already coming in with the answers. <laughs> um, right. So ice cream to coconut ice cream. So then like that decadent really just, I'd rather have you have a bite of decadent coconut ice cream than go to yogurt land and leave with like, I don't know, a sand bucket full mm, of froyo good. and Reese toppings. Cups on top and, mm. That's what I mean. No, <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> so, Is there a way to train our brains to just not even like sweets and bad foods? Honestly, the less you eat them, the less you less crave, you crave them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more you eat them, you're just going to be like, I want more. Yeah, exactly. So, so you can go like 90 days where you're just really not eating them at all. Yeah. A little bit every now and then. I feel like I'm an all in or all out. Like, There's a lot of people that it's are challenging like that. to be like, eh, I'll just have one little bite of an ice cream. I'm like, no, give me the whole pint. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> or I'll deal without it. Sure. I think I have I have some like strategies for that and for wine. Like say for example you go yeah, I don't drink, so but yeah. That's easy. For everyone else that drinks. Yeah. So if you go to abroad and say for example you're like in Italy and you're like gelato. Oh, I love gelato. Right? So I would say for every city, say you're in one place for three days, you can have the gelato on the third day. So like that way when you don't have it the first day you're not having it every, every day. single day <laughs> and then by the last day you're having one after lunch and one after dinner <laughs> i would have like <laughs> multiple scoops and just go on the plane just like crash you know i mean it's a little bit different for guys especially guys, uh, men have that have been athletes because mm. i mean my husband was the same is the same way like him and his brother talk about his mom bringing home one of those uh, huge containers from costco with the red handle ice cream and finishing uh, it in like one sitting sounds amazing but you guys have Oh, you know, a lot more muscle mass, human growth hormone, tosto- testosterone, and you can sometimes right. handle more that a little bit, the, yeah, yeah. a little right. bit better. So, um, so yeah, it's just about like empowering people to like make a little healthier choices. Not saying, sorry, you're never going to have ice cream again. Right. Cause like what world would that be? Okay. Horrible. <laughs> now let's talk about, um, how you're able to build your brand. Cause there's again, a lot of people, whether you're business health coach, whatever it may be, any type of coach, You've built your brand in a powerful way that's specific. You've gotten a ton of press. I mean, you're, where's all the press you're at here? I saw you on E! News, Vogue, People, you know, all these other places online that you've been featured. Yeah. And you get all these celebrity clients, Jessica Alba, Emma, Emma Russum, is that her last name? Emmy Russum. Uh-huh. Emmy Russum, sorry. She's in Shameless. Che- oh, she's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never know these people's names, but I recognize them, yeah. Yeah. And then Chelsea Handler. So how are you able to, one, build your brand build your clientele up and then build kind of like the celebrity brand as well. Yeah. I mean, well, when it comes to the brand, it really was pretty organic. It's what I love and Mm. I was passionate about. So branding design. Yeah. 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 And I feel like from my website to my Instagram, to the message that I had, which was, it's not about perfection. It's about having a purpose. It's about, um, you know, feeding yourself to turn off hunger hormones and kind of, I think I was saying what people were dealing with, which is, yeah, if I have a bite of ice cream, I want the whole pint too. I can, you know, understand where you're coming from and here are some strategies for that. And it was working for people and it wasn't something that they had to go to Erewhon for every single meal. And it wasn't, (laughs) it was attainable. And so I think that that started with a little bit of groundswell the positivity it was fresh it was clean and I was always doing it I was pretty consistent about it sharing information giving information away because Mm -hmm. I think people are always always asking people to sign up to work with them to get any information but just give it for free you got to bring value and then people want to work with you privately that's that's how it works so um you know, I used what was great about having my other career while I was building this business is that I could come to the table professionally. I didn't say, oh, I, I'm having a midlife crisis and I don't want to be in cancer and genetics and I quit and now I'm going to go back to school and then be a nutritionist and try to build this business without any like financial support. I was able to say, okay, 
maybe we won't take this vacation and I'll take that money or maybe I won't save this month and I'll take that money and build my website the way I want it to be, the rep- to represent me and my brand. And maybe I'll ask a friend who's trying to be a photographer if she'll take some pictures right. of my food and I will bust out 12 recipes on a Saturday and Quickly, share them yeah. throughout the week. And I gave up a lot of personal time and I gave up a lot of family time and you know, I still prioritize things that made me happy, like working out and eating clean, but I really, I wanted it too bad. I wanted it so much that I was willing to do it and put in the effort and it paid off. So the branding I think is natural because it's what I do and I didn't have to make it up out of thin air. It's not like when I went to sell my book in New York that I, w- I was pitching random ideas. I was like, I got to sit down and say, this is what I use with my clients and it works. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds crazy, but everyone wakes up and they have a shake and one o'clock rolls around and they're not starving. So they make better decisions at lunch and they don't reach for the bread in the salad bag. And because they ate well at lunch, they're not crashing and craving a brownie and a cookie and a coffee and because of that we can kind of plan to give them a bridge snack between lunch and dinner if they need Mm. it and maybe we give them something emotional like um you know something that's chocolate protein type of a flavor that's yummy and makes you feel good but doesn't make you crash into dinner and then they make better choices there and it isn't something where i'm forcing them to say weigh your chicken and measure Mm. it i got to explain all of the success that i've had with clients and they were like great let's write a book about it and so it's so authentic to the last six years of my life now and the clients you know hundreds of clients that i've worked with that it's easy to talk about yeah and i think people are always constantly trying to build their business by by building their message before they work with clients and i think what ends up happening is you start working with clients and you see what people what what is the theme what are people you know maybe all kind of commiserating about what are the what are the problems that they're having and what are you know like how is that the same and how can you help fix that how can you always be helping Mm. and that's i was kind of looking at where we were failing and saying i can help and this is this is a strategy to do that and it's not you know really difficult right so accessibility and ease of use and positivity, I think, and not asking people to change their whole day, but just say, mm. just the first third, Right. move for 30 minutes. Okay, you don't feel like moving, walk your neighborhood for 30 minutes, right. have your shake, go on with your day. That's all you have to do. And then I get emails, calls, texts, DMs. Oh my God, I'm telling my friends, they're doing <laughs> right, right. this, they're doing the Fab Four smoothie too. And it's really positive. Mm-hmm. So. Did we talk about the third part of the day? The third part of the day is making sure that you do not overindulge after dinner, which mm, it's the hardest. Yeah. Well, when people leave for work and they grab a non-fat latte and a kind bar and they're counting their calories and then they get to lunch and they have a salad without their dressing and then they get to their quest bar, or like RX bar or whatever, one hard boiled egg at like four <laughs> and then dinner happens and they're like, okay, four ounces of chicken and broccoli. <laughs> and you're like, like I'm starving. You're going to eat ah. your whole cabinet after that. So I try to take it from a cone shaped day where you're eating a little bit at, at mm. breakfast to a lot at the end of the day. And I try to make it a flat bar where you're eating about the same throughout the day, but you're using those inputs to turn off hunger biologically mm. and calm those ho- hormones. Wow. So powerful. What's the biggest transformation you've seen in one of your clients? I have two clients that come to mind. Um, one lost 60 pounds, one lost 50 pounds. Um, and what's so amazing to me is it's their lifestyle now. What was just something they were willing to try in the beginning is now, you know, I'm on their Insta stories and they're at Barry's or, you know, at the sweat garage and then they're grabbing a smoothie after whether it's at Earth Bar or Beaming or they're Mm -hmm. making it at home. And there's just so much confidence and like they they give off so much. They're just so vibrant and their careers have excelled because of it. And I feel like it Mm -hmm. affects so much of their life it just makes me really happy. Like I'm really grateful to get the opportunity to change someone's life like that. It's, it's really powerful for me. Mm, That's cool. Yeah. I mean, health is everything without it. We make poor decisions in our life and our relationships, our career, everything. Yeah. I think it starts with our bodies and how we feel about ourselves. So health is everything in my mind. Sweat garage. That's in West Hollywood, right? Yes. 
I remember I met the founder, a woman. She's the founder, right? I haven't Isn't actually been, but okay, I yeah. just I was wondering what it up. is. She was yeah. like, you got to come. I was like, I don't even know what this is. It sounds like a, I don't know. There's a lot of cool little like hit training. Oh, yeah, of course. Little yeah. garages popping up here and there. So let's talk about how you got the, uh, I forget, I think I went off track here. How did you get started getting celebrity clients? How did you get the credibility or the ins or what did that look like? Because I think a lot of health coaches, business coaches want to have kind of those celebrity clients. Sure. They came from a number of different sources. Mm-hmm. I would I, I would say I'm a serial networker and Me not too. Yeah. <laughs> not like I'm looking to get something out of people. I'm always looking to provide value. Mm-hmm. And like Meet I said, people and just, yeah, yeah just hey, like we can work together even if our businesses are totally different. Like the jewelry that I'm wearing, which is from a company that wanted to share at my blogger event. Right. So we You know, they, I was like, I gave them a platform to all of these influencers and said, yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. Come on in. I don't care. You set up a table. It's, we're just going to do some yoga, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know? And now, and we have a great relationship and they were regramming my smoothies and I didn't ask them to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not totally on brand for a jewelry brand to Instagram smoothies, but you know, you just, it's, it's, it's not about being on a solo mission to the top. It's about all boats rising together. And yeah, so for, for me, the celebrity clients came from a number of different ways. Um, Mike Alexander is a friend of mine. He trained Jessica Simpson for Daisy Dukes. So he gets actors and actresses ready for movie roles. So my first client with him was Eve Hewson, Bono's daughter, and she was getting ready for the Nick, which is a Showtime show she was in. And Mike wanted some better results. So he just brought me in and said, why don't you sit down with Eve and talk to her about food? And I did that for free. Um, That was five and a half years ago ish or four and a half, I guess. Um, And, and then she got great results. So then he got a contract with the X-Men kids. So Evan Peters and Ben Hardy, then um, when they, he was getting signed on to do their training, he put a clause in there that I had to work with them and this was my rate. And well, you as a trainer you want your clients to see results and if they're not dialing in the food doesn't matter how hard yeah, you work and, yeah and 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 that's something where i think i can be pretty motivating for people and work a program that they can get excited about and then see results right cuz they're doing the smoothie and then they're seeing some results so then they get excited and they want to know well what do i do for lunch and what do i do for dinner when we break up that day into thirds it's yeah. you get they get hungry for knowledge of what's next, what's next, what's next. And we just push a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. And all of these little things that they're doing that become habits are easy because they're habits. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, and then when it come, came to Jessica Alba, this is an interesting story. I actually was asked by Target to come to an event. And it was an influencer event at the Lombardi house, which is just a you know pretty white house in Hollywood that they throw events at. And Target was launching a product line and there would be 50 influencers there and a caterer with a build your own beautiful like quinoa protein right. bowls and um, gift bags and all of that. And of course, I said yes, because I say yes to everything. I've I've learned that I, ha- I need to stop over committing mm. and and really prioritize what's important. Yeah. Well, or, I think when you're starting out, you need to say yes to everything. Yes, exactly. And you know, they set up a furniture vignette for me and I was supposed to be an experience for the influencers. Like they could sit at this little chair next to me and ask me health questions. Mm-hmm. But they didn't really advertise it right for the influencers. So you're just kind of sitting there like, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so they were just, I think they thought I was an antisocial blogger right, <laughs> that they had right. never heard of before. You need like just, a sign that says like free health advice. Yeah, or something like exactly. Me. Exactly. So I was sitting there you know, twiddling my thumbs, waving to people saying, hi, I'm pretty friendly. Um, and, but they didn't get it. Wow. So, you know, the party's starting to wind down and I, I stand up, I'm like, maybe I'll go stand by the food and help people like build their bowls and talk about the nutrition and microgreens and, you know, the zinc and tahini and all, whatever. And then they thought I was the caterer. So they're like, oh, right. this food's great. Can I get a card? And I'm like, I'm not the caterer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then it's winding down, and Lauren Anderson, who was Jessica Alba's makeup artist at this party, and one of her friends from junior high came up. Everything's winding down. They're like, well, you should get your food before you leave. Right. You know? And so she's <laughs> filling her bowl, and I'm filling mine because it's kind of the end. And, and I go to sit down. She's like, do you mind if I sit here? And I'm, sure. First person to sit here all day. 
and we have a conversation as she's dealing with a few things health wise, mm. some inflammation. She's a makeup artist, so it's like in her fingers and her hands. Yeah. And I'm like that's interesting. You might have an allergy to something. You know, we should we could absolutely get some testing done right. and we could talk about a plant and you know an anti-inflammatory plan for you and then she had some body composition goals and so we're chatting for about 45 minutes and she said actually can I just set up a real appointment I said absolutely let's do it and so the next week I saw her four weeks later her symptoms were gone she, wow. was, she was feeling amazing she's she working was, on Jessica all day like oh this is amazing so she's yeah. talking about me to Jessica and yeah. at about six weeks after meeting um after meeting Lauren, I had the email introduction to Jessica that was like, this is my soul sister from childhood and wow. you can help her and she wants to meet with you. And then after I met with Jess, that was, I mean, we had, doors, yeah. yeah, and she had great results. Like she, she lost 11 inches. So mm. 11 inches. Yeah. Where? I mean, well, you take an inch Everywhere. off each arm, an inch off each leg, wow. and, you know, like hips and waist Crazy. and she has a phenomenal figure, yeah. you know? So we sit down and I'm like, what are your expectations? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Already from the start. But, but we all have our fit range and our, maybe like our comfy range. <laughs> call it and she just wanted to you know she can't be everything she is so professional so successful mm. a great mom a great hus- like I was gonna say husband a great wife she obviously is a beautiful actress so there mm. you know I think it's really nice to Tough. outsource some of your life absolutely and like pick the things you're good at so yeah, it's hard to coach yourself on everything exactly and be accountable to yourself in every area yeah it's really challenging yeah you oh, can we- maybe do it for one or two things sure but <laughs> If you have to like check your food, check your workouts, check your finances, your relationships, it's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and if you're not that great at it, it's probably worth outsourcing. Yeah. And you can put your 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 energy somewhere else. Energy somewhere else that's going to be more successful for you. Mm-hmm. And so I I was so excited to help her, and we've been working together for you know almost three years. Wow, and great. she is my OG, is what I call her, my original gangster, and. Uh, she like definitely lights up my life and mm. I asked her for a quote for my book and she offered to write the foreword. Amazing. It was just one and done. And then of course she walks out, people are like, what are you doing? And then she's friends with Molly Sims and she's friends mm. with Chelsea Handler. Sure, sure. And then, you know, Jessica goes to Shawnee for her facials and Shawnee does, Other people, you know, yeah, sees yeah. Emmy Rossum. And so, Girls. All opens up. Yeah. My husband says we quack. (laughs) Yeah, right. Like little ducks. Quack, 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 quack. quack. Yes. So. I like it. Yeah. What do you think is um, something you wish everyone knew more about you or your wisdom? I think it's really important for me to know that I'm super passionate about something and I'm never going to tell someone. I'm always going to go back to their research and work hard for them, no matter Mm -hmm. who they are. Obviously, I have celebrity clients, but I also have people that are scraping together money to see me because they've been following me for three years Mm. and they're dealing with an autoimmune disease or maybe they have chronic acne. And I care so much about maybe to a fault. Like I, you know, when you get a negative comment or, or someone's mean trolling you on the internet or something, um, you know, I just, I care so much. Mm. Like I really, care how people feel when they work through my program. I care that they know I'm like cheering them on and that I am so grateful every day to, to do this job, that this is my career. Mm. It, I am in a dream world a little bit that, Mm. that, that every yes up until now has led to this Mm. and that this gets to be the career for the rest of my life makes me really emotional Mm. and really excited and really happy. And that I just want people to know that I care. And Mm. if it's not working for them, like send me an email, let me know I'm, I'm open, open to constructive criticism and I want to be better. I always want to be better. I want, always want to continue to learn. I'm not just going to throw out this book and say, this is what I've learned about the fab, you know, my fab four protein, fat, fiber, and greens at every meal. If new research comes out and I'm not right, you'll be the first person to hear about it. Like when things are, are that I've preached, research is always constantly changing. Mm. And so if it changes, I stand behind my, my word that I will always be the first to let you know, Hey, remember that one time I told you guys to do this? Well, (laughs) this study came out and I think people get really excited about their brand and stand behind it no matter what new research is or try to hide it or cover it up or whatever, especially in health and nutrition. And that doesn't lend to trust. Trust is caring, 
passion, constantly working, constantly studying. And if something isn't right, being the first to tell them. Mm, I love it. And the book is called Body Love, Live in Balance, Weigh What You Want, and Free Yourself from Food Drama Forever. You bet. And it's out now. You guys can get it anywhere. It's on your website. What's your website? Bewellbykelly.com. Bewellbykelly.com. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, everywhere, right? The everywhere book. books are sold. There you go. <laughs> um, and what is your social media handle? Everything. I, I actually was able to snag Be Well by Kelly on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Right. Everything. Be Well by Kelly. Be Well cool. by Kelly. Um, final few questions for you. This is called The Three Truths. Mm-hmm. So you said you've heard a couple episodes. So three truths. If this was uh, your last moment to share three things you know about how to live a great life or all the lessons you've learned in life and there was three things that you could share with the world and that's all they would be able to remember you by. You wouldn't have the books, the videos, nothing online people would have of you but except for these three truths. What would you say are yours? I would say the life, your life is the lens in with which you choose to view it through because we can be positive and we can be negative or we can be competitive or we can be, you know, lift other people up. And I think if you choose the lens that is glass half full, that everyone's cheering you on and that, you know, you can be successful, then that's what will happen. So choose the positive, choose the rose colored glasses, Mm. because if this is, you know, one chance to live your life, be positive about it. Yeah. That would be one. Mm-hmm. Um, my second thing would be follow your dreams. No matter what it is, be absolutely persistent. Believe in yourself. Obviously, my parents were like, an RD. No, you'll end up at a dialysis center. Why would you do that? But believe in yourself. Like, look inside yourself and say, what am I passionate about? Mm-hmm. It's not too late. As I was in my mid-20s, I thought, oh, well, I'll just be in cancer and genetics for the rest of my life. Like... I'm already so old. Why would I go back to school? I was so young. (laughs) You know, it's never too late to follow your passion and follow your dreams. And you have to say yes and keep taking those steps forward every single day to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you take those days off or you say, I'm not good enough, I'm not going to push towards that passion to make it a life, then you won't be living it. Yeah. And then I think the third thing is tell the people you love that you love them and don't, you know, don't just tell them, show them like physical touch, hugs, laugh, like see them, show up for them. Don't just like their pictures on Instagram, like be there, be present because I think life is so fleeting. And a lot of times I get caught up as an entrepreneur. My mom will text and be like, Hey babe, how's it going? Heard you got GMA for August. Like, Great mom, you know, like, Mm. but to show up for her and to be like, I'm so excited or pick up the phone and FaceTime her and say, Mm -hmm. celebrate it because we got to celebrate each other and we got to show up for each other. And if we're doing it alone, it's, it's not the best life. I agree. So So good three truths. Those are mine. I like them. Uh, Before I ask the final question, Kelly, I want to acknowledge you. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm going to acknowledge you for the way you show up and how much you care. Because I can really tell you care a lot about all the people you work with, whether they're celebrities, big names, or they're just people who are looking to live a better life. I appreciate your diligence to understand the research to the highest level and nerd out on it. I appreciate your ability to package it in a way so people can understand it and it's relatable for people and it's not too challenging. And I appreciate your commitment to continually staying on people to live their best life. So I'll acknowledge you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Do I get to acknowledge you back? You can acknowledge me afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so make sure you guys go pick up Body Love. Um, definitely go get it. I'm excited to check it out more myself. Thank you. And um, last question is what's your definition of greatness? Trying your best. And that's that's from my dad. There you go. You got to try your best and set the own, your own bar. I like it. Kelly, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.